the Easter Bear Creek family. Please worship with us as we rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Here we go. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day now your mercy now your mercy has saved my soul now your freedom is all that I know the old made new Jesus, when I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name. Into your glorious day I needed rescue My sin was heavy My chains break At the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan Now you call me A citizen of heaven when I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day. Amen, amen. He is a good God, He is a faithful God. Lord, we come to you today on this beautiful Easter Sunday, just giving you thanks, just praising your name, Father God, sending nothing but love and shouts to you. We send you our highest praise. Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to come into this place, Lord. There's nothing that we want more but just to see your face, to taste your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for all, all that you do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close 
Tasted and see of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. And fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is where our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Now taste it and see. Of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is born. 
thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence, for your Holy Spirit to come into this place. We thank you that you have us in your hands. Lord, I ask today that you help us to live by faith and not by fear. Lord, as we rejoice in your resurrection, thank you, Father, for your sacrifice for what was done for us on the cross, for loving us so much that you gave your only son. But on this day, we say that he rose again. And for that, Lord, we are forever grateful. In your mighty name. Good morning. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. It's uh, Easter morning. Uh, Happy Resurrection Sunday here at Bear Creek. Uh, I I hope you're wide awake on this uh, Easter morning as we are praising God and and just uh, uh, remembering that Jesus Christ is alive and that's why we are alive as well. I uh, want you to continue to pray. It's prayer time here at Bear Creek, and we want to continue to pray that God will continue to give us the victory and that we can continue to keep uh, hope alive in our hearts and in our church and in our community, in our country and our world. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for lifting us up uh, today and uh, lifting us up for your blessings as well. Help us to believe in your provisions of healing and of deliverance and, and just allowing us to be all that you have called us to be. I pray that you anoint each and every one of us as, as we are here today to worship you. Anoint us with strength and self-care today, tomorrow, and always. I pray that as we remember your resurrection power, uh, that you will give us grace with patience and wisdom that we continue to be encouraged, God. I pray for encouragement, encouragement to everyone that is viewing us today, Lord Jesus, everybody that's connected with Bear Creek today, everyone on the front line, Lord Jesus, that's fighting this fight for our lives, our health, our finances, our businesses. I pray, God, that you continue to help us throughout the day and to take the correct steps uh, to walk in faith, wholeness, and wellness. We love you so very much, and we pray that you continue to comfort us in our suffering. Guide us as we continue to bless you, Father. I thank you for those that, Lord Jesus, are continuing to trust you. I pray that you continue to bring healing to those that are are infected, Lord Jesus, with COVID-19, with this virus, and suffering with this disease, that you continue to bring healing to their bodies. I pray for those families, Father, that are grieving and the loss, Lord Jesus, and, and let them continue to know that you are of God of resurrection, not just physical resurrection in the world to come, but also spiritual re- resurrection for us even today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. We We don't want to ever, Lord Jesus, be afraid and not have our trust in you. So we pray that we put our trust in you as our resurrected Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. What a blessing it is to come together and know that we serve a resurrected Savior. As we prepare for giving today, I ask that you continue to uh, just bless the Lord with your giving, knowing that God is providing for us. Remember, as we continue to pray, I love uh, the symbol of this cross. It's the, it's, it's all shall be well. As we give today, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. As you give today, give with that kind of spirit that God is a good God, and with a grateful heart, let's bless the Lord today. Let's pray. Father, as we give today, Lord Jesus, take these gifts and use it to your glory. I know we're giving electronically, Lord Jesus, and and, and wanting you to use everything that we give to continue the kingdom here at Bear Creek and in our community and around the world. Help us to touch lives, that people will be resurrected in their spirit, Lord Jesus, and anything that they need, Lord Jesus, that they would feel the joy of the Lord. Give them that today, we pray, as we give with a grateful heart, knowing that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, the Lord loves you, and he loves a cheerful giver.
on this Easter morning, let's look at the word of God together. Mark chapter 16, verses one through six. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side and then they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. This is the word of God for the people of God. And everyone said, thanks be to God. On this Resurrection Sunday, we are faced with both doubt and possibilities. Sometimes in God, sometimes even within ourselves, humanity has overcome so many doubts. Thomas Edison said, quote, I have not failed. I have found 10,000 ways that won't work. Humanity can see possibilities. The crew of Apollo 11 splashed down in the Pacific Ocean January 24th, 1969, after landing humans on the moon and returning to Earth. 51 years later, here we have an international space station orbiting at 230 miles above the Earth. But you can see doubt in their eyes. These women were so surprised because they had no idea that Jesus would not be in the tomb. Sure, he said it over and over and again, I will rise from the dead on the third day. But you know, I can hear them saying it's possible, but how probable is it? If you say something is probable, it's probable you are expressing more confidence about than it if you would state it was possible. The distinction is significant. It is possible, for example, for anyone to become wealthy, but the probability is infinitely variable. America's 20 wealthiest people now own more wealth than the bottom half of Americans' population. Combined, think about that. In, in Forbes editorial pick just last year entitled, Are You a One Percenter? William Baldwin said, you just need shy of $1.4 million to be in the top 10%. And then he said this, to be a one percenter, you need to accumulate 10.2 million. Probability? Well, it's the likelihood of something happening. It's possible to be in the top 1%, but what's the probability for you? And what does that mean for you as a Christian? So you and I, we can relate to these women, can't we? How many times have we heard God tell us, yes, you can, yes, you can. You are my child and you are a possibility. As a kid, we would sing this song by Gaither. It says, I'm a promise, I'm a possibility. And he goes on to say, I'm a promise with a capital P. I remember this. I'm a great big bundle of possibility. And then it says, I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Think about that. A possibility is defined as a thing that happens, but a probability is what has potential. Remember the scripture in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Sure, we've all doubted God at times. But back to the scripture now. When the Sabbath was over, it says. You see, observance of the Hebrew scripture was universally from, uh, the Sabbath was from the sixth day even to the seventh day even. And it had been three days since Jesus had died and was put into the grave. 
So the sun, the little s, has risen. But these women were unaware of the sun, the capital S, had risen. The women were on their way to anoint Jesus' body. They had purchased these sweet spices, aromatic oils used to further offset the odor of decomposition. For in the climate of Jerusalem, decay would proceed rapidly. But these women did not realize that their oils would not be needed at this particular morning because it was Resurrection Sunday and Jesus had made a possibility a reality. Reality is a thing that we actually experience or something we actually see. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The grief over Jesus was greater than their, their faith in Jesus. Their planning showed that they did not expect Jesus to get up. You can say they doubted, having a feeling of uncertainty or, or lack of conviction. But when doubt is experienced as a not knowing, that doubt then is a motivation for us to search, to search for understanding. And so I pray today that there's something inside of you, even if it is doubt, even if it is uncertainty, that there's something that's motivating you to know more about this Jesus that has been resurrected. And so what if they did not know Jesus had risen, but were energized to inquire? Where is Jesus, they said. The answer they receive is, we know who you're looking for. I love this scripture. In Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 8, it says, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day will be raised again. And then they remembered his words. Today, we celebrate Jesus for taking what we thought was an impossibility and made it a possibility, increasing our probability of making it a reality in our own lives. We have the opportunity to experience salvation, forgiveness of sins, and its grip on our reality. The scripture says in Acts chapter 4, verse 11, there is salvation in none else. For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which, which we can be saved. It's an impossibility to be delivered from the power of sin and its consequences except, except through the resurrected Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can make salvation possible. What else does Jesus make possible? Well, Jesus makes the indwelling of the Holy Spirit a reality for you as well. Acts chapter 2, verse 32 says, Christ, I love this, God raised this Jesus to life, exalted him to the right hand of God, and he has received the Father from the Father, the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 says, And he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because his spirit who lives in you. Because of God's spirit, because of God's spirit, you and I, we live, we move, and we have our being. The scripture says we are God's offspring. The last probability or possibility I want you to think about is this. Before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death was a final. No one had seen anyone come back to life, live forever, and never die again. No one had seen that. Jesus is making eternal life a reality for you. Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and I am the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. If 
finishes with a question. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? If you believe like I do, then it makes, you should be excited because it makes me excited that I can see Jesus one day, that I will be able to see those that I've served as pastor with. I will be able to see those that I worked in ministry with, my, my dad, my grandmother, my sister. You see, that's what resurrection is all about. It's about living forever. But I look, I look beyond heaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 40 through 44, it says, there are also bodies in the heavens and bodies on the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. The sun has one kind of glory, while the moon and stars each have another kind. And even the stars differ from each other in their glory. It is the same way, the scripture says, with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in darkness, the scripture says, or in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. Think about that. Next week, we're going to start a new sermon series called Living Life Resurrected. And it's, it's going to be exciting for, for you, I know, because we seldom, seldom talk about this subject. But it's a glorious future. It's a glorious future because of Jesus Christ. It's a glorious future in a spiritual body. And the possibility was only made a reality through the resurrection of Jesus Christ in which we celebrate today. Let me say this, and I love it. You know it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the resurrection. Not just the historical resurrection of Jesus Christ, but thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ in me and in you. Thank God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ in all the believers that have gone before us, those that will come after us. Thank you so very much. Because you live, Jesus, we live also. We love you and we thank you. Thank you, God, for raising your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thank you for allowing Jesus Christ to live in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. On this Easter day, if you, and Resurrection Sunday, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, oh, it's a great day. It's a great day for you to experience the resurrected Christ. The, the only way you can feel alive, like I'm talking about feeling alive, is if you invite Jesus Christ into your life. And you won't just live resurrected today, but you will live resurrected tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, will you pray this prayer with me? Say, Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, for loving me so much that you gave Jesus to me and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. Invite him to come into your life. Right now, come into my life, Jesus. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, believing the resurrected Jesus is living within you now. God's spirit is living within you right now. If you would like to talk more about what that experience is like, please text me. Let me know. I love to talk with you about it. Text me at 832-773-4901. Let me say that number again. It's 832-773-4901. I would love to talk to you, love to be on this journey with you, knowing that on this Easter, you are a new person in Christ. You have been resurrected because of Jesus Christ. If you don't have a, 
a church home, I would love to be your pastor as well. You can text JOIN in your name to that same number, 832-773-4901, and we can talk about what it's like to be a part of this great church. I love you so very much. Miss you. Look forward to when we can hug again and really come together as a church here at Bear Creek. Until then, you have a resurrected Sunday and week. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Remember, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. God bless you. See you next week.